Hey friends, it's Amy from RaisingArrows.net and today we're going to be talking about nature bags. Those of you who are on my email list may have gotten an email a while back where I talked about my nature bag, but I've never actually written about it on the blog and I've not podcasted or done a YouTube video on it, so I wanted to do that for those of you who were curious to know more about our nature bag. So this was an idea that I got from the Homegrown Preschool preschooler, sorry, by um, Kathy Lee and Leslie Richards. I use their A Year of Playing Skillfully preschool curriculum, and they talked about having a bag at the back door that had nature type items for nature exploring, um, just sitting there readily available. So that's what I did. I thought, fantastic idea, let's do that. I'm going to show you real quick. This is my nature bag. I picked up this cute little picnic type bag at Aldi a while back. Um, it was a really good buy. It was one of their special buys and um, I just grabbed it because it's got really you know sturdy handles and things like that and it just sits at the back door. I also have a um, waterproof blanket at the back door as well so that we can lay that out on the ground because like right now we are studying clouds. In the basket I have our current nature explorer from A Journey Westward. These are fantastic, fantastic nature studies. They are low-key, they don't expect a lot from you mama, and um, I, I just have really enjoyed these over the years. So this is the one on captivating clouds. So that's in there along with our cute little cloud binoculars. Um, these are just paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls. I stuck some tape around them. The little kids use them, you know, to look at clouds. So we lay on the ground, we look at clouds, we go through our little um, cloud booklet here and we do some cloud experiments and cloud crafts and so that's what we're doing right now. Now I do have a real set of binoculars. Folks, these binoculars are the ones I used when I was in 4-H as a very small child for the bird watching class. These have been around the block, but they still work. Um, they were my parents. I mean, they are super heavy duty and really old, but they work. And I'm not afraid of them getting broken, <laughs> so I just keep those in there toward the bottom. Um, I also have, for more close-up inspection, this was another idea from Kathy at the Homegrown Preschooler, and these are jeweler loops. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better there. So these are what the jeweler would use to look at the fine gemstones, you know, make sure they're real. These are great for putting up next to leaves, bugs, just about anything you could think of in nature to take a closer look at it. So I actually ended up buying, I guess I have four of them, because I pretty much always have four kids at a time doing something. Um, they all like to do it together, so so I go ahead and try to get what I can there. That it, it was inexpensive enough that I was okay with buying several. Sometimes I'm like, no, you guys can share. But this is something I thought would be good to have four of. I also bought in bulk these little magnify viewer bug den kind of things. I'll open one up for you. Um, these were super cheap too and they came bulk so that's that was great. That works for us. Um, there is a grid on the bottom to be able to kind of see the size comparatively and then the lid itself is the magnifying um, and you just put the bug inside there and there's some little air holes and then you can view the bug inside there and then eventually let it go. Another book in my nature bag is this one. I've had it for years, Track, Scat, and Signs. And it is fantastic. There are several in this series, but it is, it is just a fun book. And on the back, you've got a ruler to be able to measure whatever you found. This one talks about just tracking animals by their scat, by the signs that you see like a deer rubbings on trees, um, their actual tracks and things like that that animals leave behind for us to see. This is a great book to take out into the woods 
or out in the country along dirt roads, you know, you're looking for those tracks. So I keep that in there as too, and in our nature bag as well. Along those same lines, I threw this into the bag. We don't live in the Southwest, it says Southwest Animal Tracks, but this was just a postcard that we picked up in our travels, I think when we were in Arizona. And it's got enough similar animals that I threw it in there because it's interesting and it's a nature thing, so I just keep it in the nature bag. I also have field guides. So I've got a couple of bird ones. I have an insect one. It's not in here right now. I do switch these out periodically. But um, I've got the nature guides here. And Cindy West from Nature Explorers from our journey westward, she gave a really good idea recently about how to make sure that you can keep track of what you've seen. So if you are out and about and you have your field guide with you in your nature bag, you're out looking at things, you can just put a little star sticker. If you keep the, the sticker um, in, your, in your book, you can peel off a star sticker and stick it by the animals, the insects, the plants, whatever that you have seen so that you'll be able to look back someday and be like, oh, hey, we saw this. You can even mark it where you saw it. But if you're in a hurry, you can just stick that sticker on there and you know you've seen it. Another fun book I keep in here, well, it's fun to me. I don't know how fun it is to the kids, but it's A Forager's Harvest. This came highly recommended as a book that is kind of the premier book for looking up edibles. And so it just has very full color pictures because that's what you want in an edibles book. You don't want to mistake something. So there are full color pictures in here so that you make sure you don't mess up. Um, it's fun to try wild edibles. Just be super careful with it. We typically don't try them unless we are with somebody who we know has knowledge of this kind of stuff. We've looked it up in the book or it's something we grew up with. Um, my husband and I both grew up in small towns out in the country um, where that was something very common where you went out and you picked things that were wild alongside the road. You knew where not to pick. You know, you're not going to pick by the irrigation that has the fertilizer in it, you know, because you don't want that on your plants. But if you were out in the middle of nowhere and you can tell that the field has not been sprayed, you pick those things. And so we grew up with that in, in the particular region that we're from. But um, like where we currently live, I don't know this area as well. So I want somebody else to tell me that it's okay, you know, a local to tell me it's okay to eat that. One final book that I keep in here is this tome, Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Broadford Comstock. This is kind of the premier book from the Charlotte Mason world for nature study. Um, I honestly don't use it a ton, partly because it isn't color pictures, partly because I found it easier to navigate field guides and things like that. But I do keep it in here, and the kids do look at it. And it does have lessons in there more so than a field guide is going to give you. Now, if you're looking for some inspiration in the nature study area, I highly recommend anything by Karen Andriola. But this is Lessons at Blackberry Inn, and then she also has a pocket full of pine cones. And while they paint a very surreal picture of life as a homeschool mom, she didn't intend for them to be super realistic. She intended for them to be inspirational. So when you read them, don't feel like, oh, woe is me. I can't make my day look like hers. She does bring in a lot of realistic elements, but it isn't meant to be totally true to life. But it does have a lot of inspirational ideas in it for you that, that she does throughout her school year. And I have enjoyed reading these immensely. In fact, my kids enjoy listening to me read them aloud. 
So I would highly encourage you to go ahead and get those two books and just read through them and, and enjoy them for what they are and start kind of gathering your nature bag and putting it at the back door, having it available for the kids to be able to go out. Or you can put it in your car and have it there if you take regular nature walks at a park or something like that. This is a really great way to have all of that stuff in one place so you're not trying to grab from different areas of the house. Everything is there, you're ready to go. So if you want to try this, I would love to hear about your nature bags. There's lots of great bags out there that would work really well as a nature bag. Tell me how you're doing it, what you're putting in there, the different things that you're enjoying studying. You can leave that in the comments section or you can email me at amy at raisingarrows.net and I will be writing a post about this and probably podcasting about it as well. So be looking for those links.